What's up, Jared W here? And today we have the weekly setup review of Monday Night Raw. Also, here on JRW Live, we just hit 300 subscribers yesterday. It was yesterday or today. I just checked the subscribers. We're at 300 now. Let's freaking go. Let's see if we can make it to 400 soon, maybe. Um. So first, so you might be wondering, why is the setup so empty? Is it because I don't own the figures or the wrestlers? No. It, part of it kind of is that, but mainly it's because... Uh, apparently, they, there were some traveling issues for WWE, so a lot of the superstars were not there. So the matches were long, and there was a lot less stuff. So they started off with the show with Rey Mysterio. Uh, with first, uh, Rey Mysterio coming out, pretty much just doing his thing. Judgment Day, of course, comes out, but it was just Finn Balor and Dominic Mysterio, assuming Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley couldn't make the show because the traveling issues. Well... Then Finn Balor ended up having a match with Rey Mysterio and picking up the victory um, by Dominic, of course, cheating. Then hit, then um, he, um, oh my goodness, Finn Balor doing the uh, the stomp for the top of uh, rope. Then was what was the next match? Oh yeah, it was the women's tag team match. It was uh, it was. So the so the champions is Becky Lynch and Lita, but Lita was attacked backstage and her neck was. She was holding her neck and everything, and girls were screaming. It was so stupid. They we, they still don't know who would attack her. So it ended up being Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch versus um, Raquel Rodriguez versus and, and Liv Morgan for the tag tents. And um, Trish Stratus didn't kick out. She lost for Becky Lynch and Lita. So there's the new tag champions. This is their first title of Becky Lynch and Lita, but Lita wasn't even part of it. And then so Raquel and Liv won. And afterwards. Trish Stratus turned on Becky Lynch. It was obvious. I have a feeling Trish Stratus was the person who attacked Alita. And it's, and it's just setting up for Alita and Trish Stratus to have another match. Maybe at like SummerSlam or something. That's stupid. They should have just had Becky Lynch and Alita be tag champions for a while. Because they were actually good tag champions. Next was Bobby Lashley versus Bronson Reed. It's been set up since the Andre the Giant um, Battle Royal. Um... Of course, Bobby Lashley won, and that's really it. Was a, oh, actually no, Bobby Lashley didn't win, or Bronson Reed didn't win. I forgot about that. Um, Bobby Lashley came out like I guess victorious, but he didn't win the match because it was a disqualification. They were both out of the ring, and they got counted out. It was so dumb. But they ended up having a huge brawl, getting pulled like they got, got pulled apart from each other. But Bobby Lashley, in my opinion, got the best of Bronson Reed, and that's why I said Bobby Lashley won. But technically, nobody won. Uh, next, Cody Rhodes. You heard from Cody Rhodes. Last week was crazy for Cody coming off of, I'm so sad, a loss from Roman Reigns, man. But he come, he, Brock Lesnar wasn't there, but he called out Brock Lesnar. He was like, well, I'm, I'm, I am afraid of Brock Lesnar because, like, you guys might be wondering, Brock, am I afraid of Brock Lesnar? But I am. But I'm so afraid of Brock Lesnar that I'm going to challenge him at Backlash. Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. That match, I'm actually excited for being like, Cody's gone so far because now imagine the back when he first before he left WWE. There's no way he would have had a match against Brock Lesnar. Now he's back and he's like in AEW. He was huge, huge in AEW, New Japan and stuff, and I love Cody then. But I feel like even then he wasn't big enough to fight Brock Lesnar. Now he's since after having that huge WrestleMania match, I I still love AEW. But I'm like I don't know if he was big enough then. I think he's big enough now, like like built up to fight Brock Lesnar. I can see it go either way of Cody winning or Brock Lesnar uh, winning because it would also make sense for, like, Cody to go on a losing streak and then, like, just having the, making the story even better because, like, having being, like, Dusty and lose for a while and build up that story and eventually winning the world title, having, like, a Dusty Rhodes story, I can see that happening. I'd honestly enjoy it, but also I would love to see Cody Rhodes beat Brock Lesnar. Like, that'd be freaking crazy. I would love it because Cody Rhodes, of course, is my favorite. And I would love to see that. But we got to find out until the backlash, which is May 6th. Can't wait for that show. Hopefully, I don't got to pay for it because that's why I'm not looking forward to this new sale, sale of WWE. Everything about WWE is getting sold. I'm fine with Vince, whatever. I'm not none of the world being back. But having to pay $50 for a pay per view. It's really going to suck. I hope that doesn't show up until for like another year, hopefully. But we'll just see. Um, next match was, Bailey wasn't part of it, but it was Damage Control. It was the Asian girl, I can't remember her name, from uh, Damage Control. And 
Dude Drop and one other girl. It was whoever wins has a number one opportunity against Bianca Belair for the title. And the girl from Damage Control won. So it's obvious she's going to fight because she got the number one contender against Bianca Belair. But obviously Bianca Belair is going to win. All the champions, besides the tag champions, were actually oh, not on the show. Austin Theory was not on the show. Gunther was not on the show. Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair wasn't on the show. I, it makes sense why Gunther wasn't on the show. Or Roman or Rhea because they're all SmackDown stuff. But Rhea's always on Raw. I'm assuming that got all affected from the traveling issue like omos wasn't on the show there were so many people that weren't on the show like it was insane street profits weren't brock like the edge damian priest half the show was missing but the main event was actually i was really bored from the main event the rest of the show i liked the long matches actually this wasn't the main event next but um kind of part of the main event but because they were all involved in it besides the alpha academy because it was alpha academy versus the usos um the women's tag match was really long dreaded way too long got really boring but this tag match was long but i enjoyed it It was the usos versus the alpha academy really putting the alpha academy over but um uh, the usos winning i mean like i really enjoyed the match because i really like alpha academy especially otis Otis, uh, he's just so funny i enjoy him um but that was a longer match pretty long actually bronze reed Bobby Lashley match wasn't long but th that match was long usos obviously won but next up was the main event it was kevin owens versus solo sokoa Obviously, Solo Sokoa is going to win because Kevin Owens got injured. Well, not injured, but he got hurt last week by him getting attacked, attacking him. And then, of course, Solo Sokoa always cheats. He cheats and wins. Then they start all beating on the Usos, and Solo Sokoa start beating on Kevin Owens. That's Sami Zayn comes out, attacking him. And then Matt Riddle. I don't get this Matt Riddle thing. Why is he helping Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens? Why is he in this bloodline story? He has nothing to do. It's Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens in the bloodline and Cody Rhodes on the bloodline Matt Riddle I mean I don't mind him as a wrestler but get the hell out of this storyline go make your other storyline you have no part in this get out bro it's not like you're gonna win the world title like I just so I don't understand get the freaking stupid Matt Riddle thing have him go after like Austin Theory like or somebody else like he, he has no part like that I honestly think they don't know what to use him for because he sucks like he's a good wrestler but his character in my opinion sucks good wrestler character terrible but overall, the show the show was pretty good. Good matches. Um, it was it was a little boring because there's barely anybody there. Very empty setup. But I was able to make this video a little longer. It was just talking and stuff. But I'd give it a three out of five, like most shows. It, it was typical to the most show, but they they were able to do a lot with over half of the roster missing. So I got to give them some credit for that. That was pretty well done by Triple H and Vince McMahon. Um, well done by them, but this is Jared. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.